But if the monster isn't Franklin Fruitmeyer, then dude, who is it? Professor Emmanuel Ruffalo? That's right. I was trying to scare people away from the sewers while I dug my way into the bank and got rich. But you've got a job as a teacher. Why do you need more money? Oh, yeah, <laughs> my bad. Really yeah, I, off. I discovered that the Crystal Cove caves were connected to the sewer by accident while collecting mold spores for my class. Once I realized the cave led right under the bank, I put my plan into motion. Fruit Myers gave me secret access to the sewer, so I decided to frame Balloon Boy for the crime by using his disgusting dessert. I staged my own disappearance to throw doubt on any hint of my involvement. Oh, it was foolproof. Genius! That is, until you... you... Meddling. Meddling! Yes, meddling, kids, and your blasted dog ruined everything. Time to find out who these greedy gators really are. Grady Gator? Greta Gator? Gunter Gator? But why? After we ran out of gators, everybody moved out of Gators Bay. But not us. This here's our home. So with no alligators left, you decided to make imitation gator products and pass them off as real. But you couldn't have anyone snooping around Gatorsburg. So you created the creeping creatures to scare people away. Then you could run your counterfeit gator ring without anyone knowing who you were or what you were up to. Like that is one ridiculous plan. And you know what? We would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for you meddling juveniles and your unauthorized investigation of our synthetic gator accessories. It's even better, Dad. We caught the ghost trucker. And he's none other than... Let me out of here. Ah! Uh, run, run Latterton? Ooh, ah, shock. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for you meddling peers. Of course. It all makes sense. Rung was using the ghost truck to smuggle doorknobs out of Crystal Cove so he could find Theodore Avocado's missing diamond. Avocados disguised the diamond as a doorknob. That's why it was never found. You are correct, my little ascot-wearing friend, but that idiot Avocados didn't say in his journal which crystal knob was really the diamond, so I had to steal them all. And what better way than with a ghost truck to smuggle them all out of town? We should have known. The other guy who bought the tires was G. Nerno Treadall, a name far too ridiculous to be real, because it's Rung Latterton spelled backwards. But Rung, you're rich, you've got everything. Ladders, ascots, why did you need a diamond? I inherited a ladder company. We make the one product in the world that no one ever replaces. Ladders don't wear out like TVs or personal trainers over 40. No, no, they're built to last, which means no sales. The company's broke. I don't think you'll be needing this anymore. Speaking of clam cones, I see Skipper Shelton isn't around again. Or are you, Skipper? Ah! Back from the laundromat, I am. And once more does me nose hammock smell fresh as the morning tide. Wait, if you're not the man crab, then who? Everyone, meet Bud Shelton. Who? The Trickle's Trickwood mascot. And the inventor, not that dirtball Trickle. Like, how did you know, Velma? I knew it wasn't a real crab because Daphne never got allergic when she was around it. Plus, when I saw the mole pattern on the cheek of the man next to Trickle in the newspaper, I remembered the same pattern on the mascot. He took the credit for my creation. It was supposed to be called Bud's Bloosh. I was still working on the name. I spent countless hours making the man crab costume, and even more time building my system of trapdoors and stairs under the beach. And in case anyone came snooping in between kidnappings, I hid my costume in a locker big enough to hold it, putting a label with Skipper's name on it over the real label. So if anyone found it, they'd blame him. All that work just to get back at Mr. Trickle? Wouldn't it have been easier and more legal to sue him? Are you kidding? Lawyers take forever. I would have succeeded, too, if it weren't for you meddling brats probing into my crustacean-themed revenge scheme. Got him, Dad! You mean her! Marianne Leardon!
Your tutor? But why? I was trying to scare all the adults out of Crystal Cove so I could run the city my way. <laughs> I told you, I have brilliant ideas. With all the adults gone, there'd be no one to stand in my way. I learned about the legend of Quejorifico and Dr. Portillo's honors class. It was the perfect solution. I used the high school's theater department for my costume. I went to every kindergarten and elementary school in the city to convince the children to pretend to be spookified. In return, I offered them Utopia. When that didn't work, I offered them candy. Whenever the children heard me playing the pan flute, that was their signal to put on their fake hair and fangs and commence spookification. I almost had the whole town cleared of adults. I would have, too, if it weren't for you, Comito Boys Quad Puella. Huh? <sighs> Loosely translated, it means meddlesome kids in Latin. Hey, Dad, she may look like a ghost girl, but in reality, she's Alice May, or she's also known as... Alice, Alice Carswell. Carswell. Carswell? As in Deacon Carswell, the creeper? That's right. He was my father. When Daddy was imprisoned, I vowed revenge on those who put him there. I used his old costume to construct my own. When I found the legend of the ghost girl online, I was ready to spring my trap. I grabbed that fool Randy to throw you all off the track, and I kept him hidden and fed in my father's crypt until I could let him go. After that, it was just a matter of getting rid of your precious leader, Fred. I wanted to destroy your gang the way you destroyed my father. And I would have succeeded too if it weren't for you meddling schoolmates of mine. Daniel Frisette? Or like, should we call you Fancy Pants? Fancy Pants? Doth my eye shadow deceive? How did you know? The Phantom had to be someone close to the Hex Girls to access the stage. And the Hex Girls equipment. And the bus. Someone with a grudge against the Hex Girls. The Hex Girls took my career. I tried to get revenge by writing bad songs for them, but they can make anything a hit. So I became the Phantom. And I'd do it again if it weren't for the uncanny boy band knowledge of you meddling brats. Now let's see who you really are. <gasps> the, the court, court fool. fool? That's my husband, Gil Littlefoot. What did you think you were doing, fool? What I've wanted to do for years. Frame you for the gnome attacks, and once you were out of the way, take your fortune for my own. Ow, will you stop that? But you're too tall. How could you ever be the gnome? There's a reason our family name is Littlefoot. <gasps> I planned this over a year. And while I've always hid my tiny legs, this finally provided me a way to make them useful. Since Amanda's dislike of pirates was well known, I planted her earring on a victim, hoping to throw suspicion her way. I used my toxin-coated gloves to paralyze all the pirates, but you would not quit. The beautiful part is that because of my... I believe the medical term is baby legs. No one would have ever suspected me. That is until you, meddling, gnome-hating, pirate-loving... Yeah, yeah, Shrimpo, we got the picture. I'm afraid these two aren't space travelers, Sheriff. I'd like to introduce Max Minner and Jax Minner. It's the Minner brothers? They've been taking care of all of Crystal Cove's insurance needs for years. But how did you know they'd both show up here? All I did was double insure the boat repair shop with a policy from both brothers. You see, each brother was only attacking the places the other brother insured. But why? Why do you think? Money. And the fact that we can't stand each other. Oh, yeah, that too. This intense dislike started back when we were circus strongmen. We had just come up with a great idea for our act. The Hercules Apes. Humongonauts is catchier. When this jerk decides to break up our act and join our rival circus, you were just jealous. We became bitter enemies, who as chance would have it, both went into the insurance business here in Crystal Cove. After that, we each focused on the same thing, destroying each other's business. And it would have worked too if it weren't for... My meddling brother! What were you? you? Play dead. Look! Ah! 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 Ah!
What's going on? I heard what sounded like some sort of hideous undying machine in here. We've solved the mystery of the Fright Hound. And your culprit is... Jason's mom? That's right, it was me all along. I saw how you treated my Jason at school. So naturally, I did what any mother would do. I built a demonic robot dog to destroy you! I framed your little doggy friend to break you up, leaving Jason a clear shot at his true love. But when you showed up and blamed him of all things, I decided to get rid of you all! I gave up a career in military robotics to raise my son, not to watch him get picked on! Now Velma will never want to be my girlfriend. And she would have too, if it weren't for my meddling mom. Wait! I'm not a vampire! I'm... Sheila Altunian? But why? Isn't it obvious? My looks are starting to fade. No, 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 you're no, 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 your skin is as tight as my ass got. This is all your mother's fault. We're the same age, but she's so beautiful. She has the skin of a teenager. That's when I realized she must be a vampire. I went to the Dinkley shop to do a little research and found the recipe for the youth juice. That potion was gonna make me young and beautiful forever. You see, in college I majored in zoology and acrobatics, studying the habits of flying squirrels. I propelled myself into the air with my quad and glute muscles. All this gave me the illusion of a real flying vampire. Why didn't you just try maybe wearing a little less makeup? Or a cuter haircut? Or use tape to pull back all your wrinkly sacks of, you know, Age gracefully. Age gracefully? Are you crazy? No, the vampire serum was my only hope. And I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you meddling. What's going on here? Mom! Oh, even now she's stealing my moment. Help! You don't hear many monsters from other dimensions scream for help. This is no monster. It's Howard E. Roberts, Hatecraft student assistant and biggest fan. Just as I suspected. Suspected how? Think about it. We found a book written by Hatecraft with sentences underlined that smelled like Chargar Gothicon. Of course it was me. Someone had to defend the professor against his critics. And what better way than to dress as his greatest creation? Fortunately, I'd taken a class in the military application of sonic shriek technology at the learning annex. Although, in retrospect, it might not have been a good idea to glue real octopus legs to my face. Ah, so that was the smell. But when Hatecraft admitted he made it up? That's when he had to fall. And he would have, too, if it weren't for the dark elder forces conspiring in the inky black of time most foul. Oh, and you meddling kids. Now, get him! <laughs> Grandma Moonbeam? Did we miss it? Where are the bugs? You're the cicada creature? But why? Isn't it obvious? I wanted to shut down Destroido. I found out they added a secret ingredient to make nature's slivers more tasty. Landfill waste! I demanded that they return to my original healthy recipe, but they refused. And because they owned it, there was nothing I could do. I vowed to get even. I saw a Norwegian documentary about a researcher using sound waves to control penguins' movements. I decided to adapt the idea for my revenge. Since I didn't have any penguins, I used cicadas. And I would have succeeded, too, if it hadn't been for you meddling young people. The Lucky Phantom? That's me, don't you know? But why? I was sick of being a sidekick, resentful even. I'm not a real ghost. I'm Jonathan Wellington Muddlemore, actor, thespian, drama tator. I was behind in my rent at the Y. So a friend told me about this clock I could squat in. When they found me and thought I was a ghost, I figured, why not? 
Ghostgate got me three hearts in a cot, but I got tired of taking a back seat, don't you know? I wanted to headline. I wanted to be the boss, in charge even, with my own sidekicks. That's when I stumbled upon the Mystery Solvers State Finals. I had workshopped my Lord Infernicus character at various comedy clubs and state fairs around the country, and it has always been a hit. It was a simple matter to use mirrors and a video projector to make myself appear and fly. A little smoke, fireworks, a skeleton puppet identical to my own bone structure for close-up work, a pre-recorded voice, and the deed was done. I even abducted my own cat, Boo. The plan was to ship everyone off to Africa, where there is a desperate need for teenage mystery solvers. I then created the ruse with the guinea pigs, sewing each of their tiny costumes by hand, using the actual vintage fabrics of their real-life counterparts, just to throw you off track. It was perfect. Genius, even! Until your ridiculous dog started acting like a hero instead of a sidekick! Ooh. You lied to me. Another peak! Maxwell! Like who's Maxwell? He works in the copy room at our gaming company. Maxwell, why? Why? I'll tell you why. You all thought you were so cool. You never let me join in the beta testing of any of your new video games. No, I was just the lowly copy boy. So I sought my revenge. I made a wild brood costume of my own. From that point on, all I had to do was steal a rocket launcher, grab someone to hack a computer to divert the train, reroute said train, board the train from a moving motorcycle, defeat the train security system, blow up the bridge the train was on, which would cause the swordfish console to be destroyed in a massive train wreck, ruining your careers, and hopefully giving rise to my own in the process. Simple. Dude, seriously? Overkill, huh? Well, it... Might have worked if it wasn't for you meddling kids. Am I right? Uh, no. Don't think no, so. No, not really. Yeah. I am the goddess of love! Bow at the feet of Aphrodite! I think you mean Amanda. Amanda Smythe? Oh, you think you're so smart. Do you know how it feels to be humiliated? Me, the smartest and most gifted student in the history of Crystal Cove. Laughed at by everyone in this school. Well, actually... You know nothing! They had promised me I would be prom queen, but instead they pulled a hideous mask over my face. The face of a monster. They ridiculed me. I left Crystal Cove that night, but I promised that someday I would return. I had always been good at chemistry. So when I stumbled on the formula for an artificial pheromone that could make people lose their minds with love, I knew I would have my revenge. Why? You're pretty now. The scars run deep. I would reclaim the crown that was rightly mine, then I would destroy this town the way it destroyed me. My plan was genius. And I would have succeeded too if it wasn't for your olfactory-challenged sidekicks. What has become of me? I suppose it started that Halloween night. My family came upon a mysterious artifact, a key to finding the great cursed treasure rumored to lie beneath Crystal Cove. It corrupted us with greed. I had just gotten my hands on it when the earth shook and swallowed our entire house My loved ones grew old and passed all around me, but I hardly even noticed. Then, those meddling kids showed up. They were after my treasure. I knew it. So I spied on them, and I booby-trapped the whole house in ways that would prey upon their weaknesses. Eh, but they left. So, you've been waiting for them to come back all this time? Truth be told, I kind of lost track. Ha has it really been that long? How do I look? I haven't let myself go, have I? Uh, no, you look fine. Oh, I love what you've done with your hair. But he's a wizard. Or at least that's who he's pretending to be. Mr. Wang? Big surprise. What? Wang? Why? I've searched for the dragon's heart all my life. 
I tracked it to your silly little town, and it was almost mine! Mine! You won't be needing oh. these anymore. Now it all makes sense. Mr. Wang used his supposed research trip to Crystal Cove as an excuse to hunt for the dragon's heart. When he saw that Mai Li was wearing the fourth dragon ring, he knew he was close. Mr. Wang posed as the evil white kung fu wizard to steal the fourth dragon ring from Mai Li. But Chen pretended to be a red wizard in an effort to stop him. After the wizard battle downtown, Mr. Wang came to my house in one last effort to get the ring. But how did he make himself fly? Oh, the same way I did. Jet pack. Oh, of course. And the magic lightning bolts? Homemade Tesla coils. Genius. It was a perfect plan. That ruby is priceless. I was going to be rich, and I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for you. Save it, Wang. We've heard it all before. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Oh, I've never been more frightened in my life. And I didn't tinkle. I held it like a man. You were brilliant. The, the production, production assistant? assistant? No, it's not. It's Argus Fentonpoof, the writer of Scream, Scream, Time for You to Die. I'm both. When you pulled out of the movie, they decided not to make it. I went bankrupt. I had to take a job as a production assistant. But why have you done this? Well, by scaring you and everyone watching on TV, I was going to prove that Night Fright deserved his own horror movie. Right before you started filming, I hid my Night Fright costume in a closet. I used the conduit to sneak in and put the costume on. I paid the other actors to pretend to be knocked out when I attacked. Of course, I couldn't let anyone know that I was Night Fright. I had to sneak out every now and then and get everyone coffee. Hey, hold it right there. I'm Harry Schnitzel Boyson, the executive producer of this show. I've been watching the whole thing from my jacuzzi. I'm blown away. Not only is your reality show going to be a surefire hit, but I've found your pathetic tale of lost dreams inspiring. It's going to make a great movie. A movie? About me? Really? <laughs> Gee. Uh... You know, none of this would have happened without you meddling kids. <laughs> Thanks. All right, let's go. Bye, everyone. See you on the big screen in 10 to 20 years. Ernesto? Hello, Comrade Daphne and her fellow Comrade Mystery Solving Teenagers. But aren't you against all this anti-environment stuff? Funny you should ask. It all started when we were doing a little research into our old foe, Destroido. We were going through their trash when we ran across some very interesting information. Dr. Kavanaugh's report on this giant oil deposit off Dead Man's Point. We came up with a plan to make enough money to fund our various protests. We were gonna drill for the oil ourselves and sell it. You were doing this for cash? You have no idea how expensive it is to be a grassroots activist. After we found the location of the oil platform, all we had to do was scare off anyone who started nosing into our business. And we would have too, but that meddling mermaid had kept her fin to herself and never contacted you. Hold on. Are you telling us that you were going to cause a major environmental disaster in order to get the cash to protest against major environmental disasters? Yes. You must be willing to kill the environment to save it. Uh, no. I don't think that's right. right. Look at that. Are manticores double-jointed? This is no manticore, Daphne. This is... Hot dog water? water? Just as I suspected. It totally makes sense when you put the clues together. Someone with computer skills had to make that fake website. And Hot Dog Water has those skills. And remember, just before the Manicore attacked, I smelled something familiar. It was briny, greasy Hot Dog Water. But what I don't know is why Shaggy and Scooby had such high voices after you attacked them before, or why you'd want this amusement park to close so badly. How could you know? Your intellect is so far inferior to mine. It all started on a boring Friday night when I didn't have a date. Hard to imagine. I decided to run some experiments on the steel used to build the park's rides. I found that if you melted the steel down and combined it with chromium, stalagmite, and mercury phosphate, it created a kind of super helium. 
Shaggy and Scooby must have inhaled some helium gas from the manticore's posterior relief hole. That's why their voices were so high. I figured if I could get the park to close, I could take all the steel, melt it down, and sell the super helium to the Australian Zeppelin fleet. I'd have made a fortune and shown you up in the process, Velma. Another mystery solved. It still seems like something's missing. Meddling kids and their dog will foil your plan. Yep, that would be it. Marion! But how did you know that she'd attacks? I don't get that! We knew that if Dr. Spartan found out that the curse was fake, he'd want to go back to living a life of adventure in the jungle. A life she definitely didn't want. Fine. I admit it. Well, you kind of have to. We caught you in the costume. But how, how did you know it was her? We found this ring at the botanical gardens. A woman's ring. You went to Oxford, too, didn't you? Yes. But, Marion, why did you do it? Because I love you! Because I hate living in the jungle. It's icky. I decided if I couldn't convince you to give up that life, I'd, I'd scare you out of it. I came up with the fake legend of Sklar Gringot. I forged an ancient map to the ruins and put it someplace you'd find it. I knew you wouldn't be able to resist the challenge. You would be so consumed with finding your next great treasure, you wouldn't be thinking of me, as usual. I pretended to break my ankle because I knew you'd send Kachinga for help and go up into the ruins by yourself. And when you did, my plan fell into place. It gave me a chance to sneak around the back of the ruins, which were actually an old abandoned movie set. The headless horror costume was the final piece of the puzzle. I had it specially designed and took months of Pilates to train my abdominal muscles to the point where I could control the mouth with my abs. But the shrunken head, it talked to me. I got it at a Halloween store. You can record whatever you wanted to say. I'm sorry, darling. I never meant to hurt you. I just wanted us to live a normal life. Which we could have if it weren't for those meddling sycophants. Kinda. Nice to see you again, Professor, Professor Pericles. Well, hello, children. How did you know? Simple. There's only one brain large enough beside my own that could have pulled this off. We found the Trojan horse program you put on Fred's laptop that let you control all of Fred's traps remotely. Fred really should have come up with a more secure password than trapping guy. Once you had control of the traps, it was like totally simple to simulate a haunting and terrify the mayor. And your avian attributes provided the means to make your spooky shadow creep float like a real ghost. Too bad for you, your avian diet gave you away. What can I say? A bird's got to eat. It still doesn't explain where my dad is and why you were haunting him. Why do you think? I wanted this piece of the planispheric disk, of course. I knew he would have it close. I just didn't know where, so I decided to scare it out of him. Planispheric disk? But how did you know he had it in the first place? Because, dear Fred, he stole it from me a long time ago. Don't believe me? Ask him yourself. I am the smartest criminal parent in the world. You didn't think I have a backup plan? <laughs> Until we meet again. Auf Wiedersehen. Mystery Incorporated. Is. Deputy Bucky! What? Bucky, you were like a father to me! You're 20 years older than me! There's no proof of that. Why'd you do it? Sheriff, I think we can explain. Bucky was tired of being just a deputy. He craved the power and prestige of the sheriff's office. 
Bucky failed every one of his promotion exams, but it wasn't just his grades that got me thinking. Like Bucky's a doodler, and his drawings looked an awful lot like Dead Justice's demon bullets. Bucky disguised himself as the ghost of Dead Justice and chased down the town's most wanted. He knew nothing would hurt Sheriff Stone more than losing his job to his hero. The only thing I don't understand is how he created those bullets. CGI. It's all CGI these days. I programmed a laser pointer to simulate the animation. Oh, Regina, time to come clean and reveal that you're... Alice May? Who's Alice May? She once pretended to be a ghost girl to kidnap Fred for her man posse because she wanted revenge for her father, the Creeper. But, like, how did you get out of jail? I got out with the help of the same person who sent me to destroy you. Mr. E. Huh? Huh? E enlisted my services to put you kids in danger in hopes of drawing out his enemy, Professor Pericles. He figured if Pericles thought you were in trouble, he'd come to your rescue. E knew if he could get Pericles to reveal himself, it'd leave his piece of the planisphere disc vulnerable. Everything was fake, special effects. But, like, where'd you get all the high-tech stuff? How'd you disappear? E took care of that. It was all courtesy of one of Destroido's shell corporations, Quest Research Laboratories. They supplied me with everything I needed. Weapons, a high-tech cloaking device, even the effects. So this was all staged by Mr. E to use the kids as... parrot bait. That's right, and it would have worked, too, if I hadn't been stopped by you, Miss Meddling Sassy Pants. And then Angel calls me, all frantic about... Who is this guy? I'll tell you who he is, Sheriff. The freak of Crystal Cove is my father. Mayor, Mayor Jones? <gasps> but how did you know? When I found out both pictures of my mother were just cutouts from a magazine, I checked the dates on the back. It was the same day I was born, or what you said was the same day I was born. Still, I wasn't sure. Not until now. Why? Why do you think? Because of the curse. For years, I'd heard about the curse and the supposed haunted treasure. That was the reason I came to Crystal Cove. I'd been accepted to Darrow University's history department, which gave me access to the town archives. When I found the story about the conquistadors that disappeared, I decided to disguise myself and begin my search for the planispheric disk. Sadly, I found nothing, until Mystery Incorporated walked into the library seeking advice. They had no idea what they'd found. Well, that wasn't true. Actually, their mascot knew. For access to my knowledge, Pericles was willing to betray his friends. We concocted a scheme to blackmail the kids into leaving town by threatening them with fabricated documents, implicating their parents in various crimes. They were unaware of my true identity, but I still had one loose end. Pericles had to go. I placed an anonymous call to the police, implicating him in the kids' disappearance. By the time Pericles woke, he was already in custody. He was sentenced to spend the rest of his miserable parrot life where he belonged in a cage. Becoming mayor allowed me to continue my search for the remaining pieces. Then I would have found them too if it weren't for you, my meddling friend.